Yeah. You know what? I'm about to say it. Three, it's okay. Three. It's okay. What's up YouTube? My name is David and this jacket is awesome. It's like a windbreaker foldable thing or packable, whatever it's called. Uh, it's merch from my, my artist friend Blackbird. Go check him out, he's really dope. But I'm gonna take this off because the mic and... Anyways, today I'm going to sing for you an eight note chord. This is a form of polyphony or polyphonic singing. Some beatboxers use this. Shout out to my new beatboxer subscribers. You guys are awesome. And I'm serving you more videos and reviews and reactions and whatever soon, I promise. There's a very famous form of polyphonic singing that is used by Layla Hathaway, which I don't know how to do yet, but I will figure it out. And when I figure it out, I'm going to make a video on it, I promise. If anybody out there knows how to do this technique, please DM me on Instagram and, you know, Let's, let's make something happen, because I'm really, I really want to learn how to do that technique. It's probably the only vocal technique that I don't know how to do, honestly, as far as ones that are known. So yeah, there, there are different forms of polyphonic singing or uh, sung chords. And basically, when you think about them, you have to remember that you can only create one fundamental with your vocal folds at one time. However, using acoustic science specifically, you can create harmonics and amplify them with your voice at the same time a fundamental is being sounded. At the same time, you can create overtones, subharmonics, undertones, whatever you want to call them. So we can give the perception of creating multiple pitches at the same time. However, the only pitch we're actually singing is the fundamental pitch. Everything's based around it though. So really, if we can amplify these harmonics loud enough, we can almost sing a chord using Using just our own voice. So I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to show you a massive eight note polyphonic chord, which if you're a bass fan, like I know most of you are that watch my channel, it's a super bassy chord. It's an E flat something. There's a low E, there's a double low E flat in it. So stay tuned for that chord. So before I show you my example of this eight note chord, I'm going to basically play it for you on the piano so you can understand which notes are being sounded and how they're being activated. The first thing you need to know is the fundamental. The fundamental I'm using in this chord is an E flat three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so as many of you might have guessed, I'm going to use subharmonics to do this. So we're going to take our fundamental E flat three and we're going to allow our voice to slip into the subharmonic register. Now what's going to happen when we hit that first subharmonic is our vocal folds are going to be vibrating at two different rates. One at the fundamental, E flat three, and the other one fifth above at a B flat three. And the resultant pitch between those two is an octave below the fundamental, so an E flat two. So we have this chord going on on our first fundamental while we're singing our first subharmonic. Then I'm going to pop down to the second subharmonic. Now when you sing the second subharmonic, the subharmonic and the catalyst pitch, so we'll call it the one above your fundamental, stack on top of the previous. So we have this for the first subharmonic. And then when we slip down to the second subharmonic, which is a fifth below, we're adding the fourth on top. So you get this as well. All right, so now we're at, we're at a five note chord. As some of you may have heard in my previous videos, the subharmonic series is infinite. It keeps going down to infinitely small intervals, but most people can only access the fourth subharmonic. I have sung the fourth subharmonic before, maybe you'll see it in the video, but generally this is the lowest subharmonic you'll hear from me and mostly anybody in the world is the third subharmonic. The third subharmonic is two octaves below your fundamental. So in this case, we're at an E flat one for our third subharmonic. To get the third subharmonic, your second vocal fold is adding the third above the fundamental. So let's start from the fundamental and go down to the third subharmonic. Fundamental. First subharmonic. Second subharmonic added. And the third subharmonic. All the notes are stacking on top of each other. As you descend down to a further subharmonic, the lowest subharmonic that you're activating is the most dominant. So the other harmonics are still present, however, they're diminished greatly. The most prominent and loudest one is always the lowest one. However, if you listen closely to the clip that I'm going to show you in a minute or so, you'll hear that the fundamental holds an almost consistent volume the whole way through. It's really great. Make sure to use headphones or some decent speakers for that because it's super bassy, and you don't want to miss out on the bassy goodness, trust me. 
Anyways, I know some of you are still counting like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So where's the eighth note coming in? Well, as you hear in the clip, I'm going to add an overtone on the top. And that overtone I'm going to add is an F, F6, I believe. This is the ninth overtone off of the fundamental. So here is the entire chord that you're going to hear. I don't know the name of that chord. If you do, please comment below because I'm not that good at music theory. I know some things, I nerd out about some things, but chord naming is not one of my specialties. Otherwise, I would have gone to Berkeley. I'm sure I bored you enough with the math and science and everything. Somebody in the comments is gonna leave a timestamp to where the actual clip is, I guarantee it. Whatever. So without any further wait, here is me singing an eight note chord by myself. So there is your eight note chord. I'm sure some of you already have tons of ideas of what you can do with this, with different equalizations and bass boosting and things that you can do with live performances or studio performances, you can really bring out a lot of these harmonics and overtones to scream over a PA system or speakers. And it's really awesome to be able to do that as one person. I can see this being very viable as a technique that people use in beatboxing to create a polyphonic voice or a multi-voice sound that a lot of beatboxers strive for. I can see this being used in acapella group squires. It's a really cool technique that has a lot of different applications. But keep in mind that this is subharmonic singing and it's not easy. It's taken a long time and a lot of practice for me to be able to stay in the subharmonic register for a long period of time and sustain it without popping and cracking like many of you have experienced. Also, I need to give a big shout out to Tao Yang, who is the professor of subharmonics, basically. Everything that I know about subharmonics when it comes to technicality and the math and science behind it, I have gained an understanding of because of Tao helping me and explaining things to me. So thank you, Tao. Thank you to all my new supporters, Beatbox people. I am going to be giving you guys new content very soon. I'm excited and happy to see you all on my channel, enjoying these vocal techniques and videos that I'm making. So thank you all for the support. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to upload a new video every week now yet I'm trying to not let my content be stale or boring. So I'm always trying to add new things, always trying to change it up. And I'm always listening to and reading your comments. So if you have something you want me to make a video on, please post it below because I'm here to entertain you and help you learn and teach you things that you didn't know before about your voice. So until next time.